Hi, um, yeah, sorry, it's, it's been a while, I had, it's, I had a lot of work to do at university, I'd let deadlines coming up, and honestly, I was getting quite run down and busy and getting, I don't know, I got a bit sick, but like, it was, it's, it's okay, I'm fine, I just, I didn't have the time to make these videos, which sucks, because I like, I, I like watching this show I love and talking about the show I love, and, you know, every once in a while someone comment and be like, oh, what do you think about this, and I love, I love that, and just, yeah, I, I miss being a part of things, I feel weird, like I drifted off for a sec, but, yeah, I'm just, I'm literally going to create these videos now, and upload them as soon as I can, and catch up. So that's going to be my sort of, sorry gift for you, you're going to get these all at once. I didn't mean to take an unannounced hiatus. I wasn't planning on it, but I I really could not face doing all these adverts, all these, adver all these videos. I don't know why I got that word mixed up. But, um, yeah, so I missed you guys. But yeah, I did, I've just watched episode is it eight i think it's eight yep it's eight uh, <laughs> of ruby volume six. Oh wow what a way to jump back in i think that's a good episode for to jump back in it wasn't like it wasn't like a really uncomfortable tense episode it had some well it did it did really have some <laughs> uncomfortable tense moments but it was like helps get you back into the spring of things like I watched that and I'm like more which is good in my case because I suppose if you are behind then you can catch up so I can have a short binge and get more I wouldn't have to wait a week because I'm behind but um oh my god yeah I mean we started right up with those gates and we saw the Atlas woman who's not winter so, something we didn't care about. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. Uh, she she was a good character for what she was. I just, I, I hate her because of every single thing she said. It could have been like a joking rivalry and then she'd made that comment with Blake and it's like, yikes. So yeah, I don't like her. Um, I haven't avoided spoilers completely about this because... I heard that there was an old there was an old racist white lady in Atlas, which like we could have guessed because it's Atlas, but um, yeah, a specific one we met this episode. So and people thought she was based on the Queen of Hearts, and maybe the soldiers were the cards. I have no idea, but that hat design that's got to be symbolic of something because those hats they look nice, but I just kept staring at them like, how do you see? But then again, like, this is Ruby, the logic's a little, meh, like, that's fine. I can, they can see somehow, I'm sure there's magic in this world, oh, like, I'll allow it, I guess. But, um, oh, yeah. That was, that was interesting. I loved the, I loved the insight into Maruri's life, because she felt like a real character, but she didn't, like, she kind of doesn't, didn't quite feel like a real person like she kind of got um made into a sort of like a myth or like a fictional figure and like she is a fictional figure but more fictional figure in the world of ruby with the flashback it sort of shone a light onto things not meaning to make a joke about silver eyes but it's there but <laughs> sorry but um yeah it it helps to bring a sense of reality to it, her relationships with other people. It makes it, it makes it, her feel like she's actually lived more of a life other than being this OP as hell, amazing huntress, and then something happening to her, and then her becoming this. Like it feels like there are things in between, which is good. I like that touch. Um, the Atlas Lady worked very well for what she for what she was. I can't like her as a person, as I said, but she's the perfect sort of um, embodiment of Atlas that I was thinking of. Like, as soon as any character is sort of, like, overly patriotic and is like, oh yeah, our great nation, 
better than the other nations. I'm like, hmm. Well, <laughs> it's never a good sign. And like, yeah, they they put that perfectly with Atlas because if that, if any country's gonna be like that, it's gonna be Atlas. You know, they see themselves like they're technologically advanced, better, higher up than the other nations. When like, they're all messes. And um, yeah, so that was that was good. That was good. I like how that was done. Uh, it was. It also led to some of the funniest jokes that we've had this volume, that scene, so, nice. Uh, but yeah, back at the house, that was a rough time. The whole, okay, I'm going to focus on the nice bits first, I'm going to carry on this Maria train, because Maria, she keeps giving us the good content that we've been asking for. I love Marie. <laughs> She's great. They've interwoven writers have interwoven plot and character quite well with her because she doesn't feel like an exposition dump machine. And she is functioning as here I am, I give you exposition, but she doesn't just feel like some people complained about Ren when he was talking about like aura and semblances when he just spoke about them and said like a paragraph and it was like Okay, Ren <laughs> But here it feels a bit more natural because, like, Ruby would ask about a silver eyes. She would ask someone who knows about silver eyes, and she would tell her about the silver eyes. Everything feels quite natural now, which is good. I like it, and I'm so glad that Ruby finally asked about a silver eyes. The writers, they must have saw, saw everyone complaining about this and was like, "Okay, we're going to give them silver eyed content this volume. We're going to give them all the silver eyed content that they need right now in this volume." And I love it so much. We're just just learning about this. It's they keep it. They seem to be keeping the more sort of so, soft magic kind of aspect to it. But yeah, and they're not going here as a specific things it can be used for. Like it's not quite a semblance, but it's. I'm intrigued because it's. It seems a bit less laser eyes powered by the power of love and friendship, and it's more like. The Grim are a force of destruction, so you are a force of protection, and you balance each other out somehow. That's... I like that. Like, I know people are going to say, like, it's very... It's a sort of very cheesy... Oh, she's like the white knight power of good thing, but like, if you have creatures which are destruction, and you have people which are protection, like, that, that works with the show's logic in my mind. It it just sort of makes sense, and I never actually noticed the the light god having silver eyes, and I never heard anyone mention it, which is really interesting, because now I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, but I just saw the light and then got destroyed, and I was like, yeah, he is a light brother. I didn't I didn't think. Wait a minute, <laughs> he is. His eyes, yeah, I just did not think. And now I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I thought some, someone out there has probably made a crack theory video or something about that and they're losing their mind. <laughs> oh my god. I think that was a nice detail though. I like it because if you establish that multiple characters watch this flashback through, as we did as an audience, people can notice different things and they have in canon. I like that. There's more reality to it. And everything about that set design there was beautiful. I mean, we had, like, the lovely mountains and everything that we've seen. and But we're also just in the house and in the garden with the butterflies. Like, they've, they've got an animation budget and they're showing they've got an animation budget. And I love it. It's It just works perfectly for the scene. It doesn't feel like they're in a set. It just feels like... They're in a they're in a room as characters. If that makes sense, it doesn't feel like someone drew a set, put characters in front of it, and pressed play. It all felt very natural to me. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to like draw people which like which don't exist and draw places which don't exist and try and make it function as a scene, especially with animation, because like suspension of disbelief we have to believe these things are real and you know they're not real 
it all felt very natural, her walking in and Maria sit down having the fruit and the butterflies. Yeah, I really like it. This was like a weird detail to fixate on, but I just thought the animation was lovely. It was a really sort of serene environment and amongst all that tension, and I think we needed that. Because as much as I like Ruby, as much as I got into Ruby because of like the fight scene in the red trailer, which I think is the reason most people get into Ruby, to be honest. But um, as much as I love all the action and everything, there has to be moments where you like just pause and take a minute, I think. Otherwise you don't appreciate it as much. And I really liked that. It was just, you have to take a minute. Everyone was like, I need time, I need space. And they got space and they used it and they didn't just go... And now these characters are separated. It was like, yeah, these characters are getting food and we're getting backstory. Uh, not backstory, exposition. Nice. Though we did get some backstory as well. I'm just rambling on and on about this, but... Yeah, it feels... If it, everything just feels so much more natural. I feel like the writers have really progressed in that aspect. It makes me happy. But... So, <laughs> I don't even see any of the things that make me happy. Ah... Oh. We got that, I was like, all the reaction videos I've been doing, I'm like, wait, I was like waiting for that Jean and Oz scene, where he like shakes him, puts him against the wall, and I was just like, this is going to happen, one episode, I don't know when, <laughs> but it's going to happen, and then it happened, and I'm like, uh, yeah. I've come, I've sort of come to the conclusion that I'm just re not really going to like Jean. As a character. And I know some people are going to watch this and be like, well, I love Sean. Sorry, but I can't. He threatened, he like, well, he didn't threaten my son. He, he acted threateningly to my son. My poor boy, Oscar, who never asked for any of this. And is so scared and has this person living in his brain that he can never get rid of. That can take possession of his body at any time. And it's making him win, like, fight in this losing battle against a goddess who can control Grimm and stuff. And it's just like, well, <sighs> yeah, like, I don't like, I don't like this development with Jean. I thought a bit before when he was acting like quite, sort of loving towards his friends, I sort of appreciated him more, especially when like, early at Ruby episodes he had a bit of that toxic masculinity thing going where it's like I want to be a strong man sort of thing and then like he was weird towards anything girly and there's a whole mess where he dressed up as a dress he wore a dress and then people laughed at him because like oh it's a guy wearing something considered feminine it's like literally every girl wearing a dress in that room is stronger than John if if you know like being being manly and masculine doesn't seem to have anything to do with strength in any way whatsoever, but there we go. That's what he wants, I guess. Yeah, it was a whole mess. So I didn't like him punching in the wall and scaring a child. That did not really gel well with me, but... Yeah, I hope the I hope the writers are sort of go to like it was a sort of moment where it was like, uh, Sean, what are you doing? And then he was like what am I doing? But still, like, Jean, what were you doing? Oscar's 14. He's, like, half your size. He's terrified. He doesn't know how to fight. Well, he does, but, like, Jean is probably better at fighting than Oscar, and that's kind of, that's saying something, you know? But, um, oof. That was, that was quite a moment there. I do like that Juniper immediately, like, went to help their friends at the gate, and then went to comfort their leader and we're, and we're upset about this development because obviously that is very upsetting and like usually they've, they're I wouldn't say happy-go-lucky but like apart from Jean you know they're like very sort of positive it's seeing them react negatively to something was I don't want to say nice, but it was uh, good for their character. I just hope they don't be like, Sean was perfectly okay for threatening this small boy. Because that was not an okay thing to do. My poor son. My poor avocado boy. 
they split up. They should you should never split up. They was like, yeah, this is fine. We need some distance. We need some space. And I was like, oh, okay, but don't go far because, you know, horror film rules. Like I know it's not a horror film now. That was a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> in the in the, I'm not sure if I should call it a cabin, but that place, the farm. That's it. Yeah, you know that was the horror film bit. But still, don't split up. Not when there are monsters and who knows what else about. Like, be careful, be safe. And then it's like, Oscar's missing. Well. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, they... Don't split up. Never split up. Why do people do this? Don't split up. I, I say, even though I play in a and d group that splits the party all the time. But yeah, don't... People at home, never split up, ever. <laughs> oh my god, my poor son. Mm. I mean, I have an idea. I can guess. I can guess when that's going to happen. I don't want to. I don't want, like... I don't want Cinder to be involved. But they... Uh, <laughs> but, like, yeah, either ran away or, like ran away and got kidnapped or something like yikes yeah someone needs to someone needs to go after my boy i'm worried when oscar first appeared i was like oh great another unnecessary character and then uh, and then like every single other ruby character that was that's that's introduced as a new character i was like after two minutes i was like wow i love them but <laughs> Yeah, so like now I don't I don't want anything to happen to us. Uh, feels bad, but yeah, I I have a feeling now that like someone's something something's gonna mention Cinder soon. They mentioned Cinder in this episode, which like I liked because Cinder is a threat to Ruby. She's not not anywhere near as big as a threat as like Salem and everyone everyone working for her. But Ruby doesn't even know about that. She just knows Salem's really powerful. She doesn't know about what happened to Cinder or anything. But I like that she's acknowledging her as a threat. Because Cinder's like... <laughs> I don't want to say obsessed with Ruby. But like, she... Yeah, she pretty much is. She's just like, literally that hero-villain relationship. Where the villain's like throwing darts at a dartboard with pictures of the hero's face on it. That's how I imagine the Ruby Cinder dynamic. That's Cinder side of things. So it's nice to be like, you know, to see Ruby be like, this woman is dangerous. Yes, Ruby, you've learned. I'm proud. I'm proud of her. I'm proud I'm so proud of Ruby. But yeah, that speaks things into existence. The next the next thumbnail has Emerald in it, so I know I'm gonna enjoy this episode whether or not cinder has taken my son or something but <laughs> oh my god i'm a mess i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this now <laughs> i'm gonna start the next episode but yeah anyway the summarization sorry for the hiatus i had lots of work to do i'm at home now i'm gonna be back at uni soon um this episode was this episode was great I love the animation and the character work and everything, even if I disapprove of John and someone protect my boy. That's and someone hug Blake because yikes. And someone hug Wyatt. Like hug every uh, hug hug every character. Also watch Crow because the alcoholism and mental health issues. Yeah, this is gonna be a rough time now. <laughs> I have a feeling things are gonna yeah, they wanted space, I don't know if they're going to get much time, so, yeah, the cats better be on their guard, but anyway, yeah, I enjoyed this episode, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was, I think all my videos are just going to be me rambling, I just, I don't take notes, I just watch the episode and go, otherwise it's going to take me, like, way too long, like, you know, those song analysis videos I've done where I did take notes and some of them took 40 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't take notes. I just go and then it's like 20 minutes. So it's not my, that, it's not a short video, but it's less rambling in terms of time. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this mess.
I am a mess. This is the next episode's gonna make me a mess. Let's go. Oh, see ya.